Oh, thank you. Well, well, we, good afternoon, Durham. We're in the right spot, aren't we, in the middle of the gym, so, great. Well, I don't know about all of you. We're gonna get through this election, have President Harris when we're done with this thing, but, but I gotta tell you, listening to Devin, our future is bright. You see it here, our future is bright. Now, I'm going to admit I'm a little partial to governors or former governors, but I got to tell you, North Carolina, and you saw it over these last challenging weeks, Roy Cooper is an absolute gem. And, and you grow them well down here because those are pretty big shoes to fill, but I'll tell you what, Josh Stein's going to do just fine doing that. And I don't know about all of you, I'm, I'm still a little bit giddy here. I'm standing on the stage with the 42nd President of the United States. <laughs> this, this is the comeback kid. This is a guy who knows a little bit something about uh, being an underdog and being underestimated a bit. Uh, but. Uh, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody that understands politics or the American people better than Bill Clinton. And somebody... He's been a leader. Uh, he understands what it takes to win these campaigns. Uh, and he gives of his time, because what he understands, just like all of you understand, you came here today and President Clinton came here today because you believe in the promise of America and you love this country. That's why you came. Okay. And I'm just glad that, that President Clinton and all of you are out here to make the case why we need to elect Kamala Harris the next President of the United States. So. Now, I, I just, I want to say before we get started here, and I bring this to you from across the country and certainly from Minnesota, um, the eyes of the country have been upon all of you. Our hearts are breaking watching. We know there's folks that lost loved ones, lost everything they had. So uh, the communities are still in the moments of recovery. I want you to know, and you've seen it, the Biden-Harris administration are doing everything they possibly can to get the relief to these areas to get it done. And it's at times like these that it brings out the best of our country. This is what it looks like to be unified. And we're going to have a choice in 19 days to decide to go down a road that Donald Trump wants to take us down of chaos and division. Or, or, Kamala Harris, or Kamala Harris's vision of a United States that cares about each and every one. So, he, He's, we're trying, we're going everywhere. Kamala and I are going everywhere. Between the two of us, we're about regulars on Fox News now. We're just going out there whatever. But Donald, Donald Trump's not going many places, and there's a reason why. He finally came out yesterday, and he did a little town hall on Univision. I don't know if some of you saw this. And he got pressed and asked, I wouldn't call them hard questions. I would ask them honest questions. And they asked him, why are you and J.D. Vance making up stories about people who are in this country legally putting them at risk, spreading disgusting, untrue stories about folks in Springfield, Ohio, Aurora, Colorado. Um, that's what he's been doing. It tells you just about everything you need to know about this. These lies that they're saying, Republican officials are telling them to stop it. And then they tell lies about the Republican officials who tell them to quit telling lies, <laughs> because that's who they are. But look, let's be honest. There are outsiders coming into communities stealing and moving jobs away, and making life harder for people living there. And they have names, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. That's who they are. That is who's going there. Now, yesterday was like an epiphany day. If you remember back a couple weeks ago, we had a little debate in New York City, and I asked the simplest question that you could ever be asked as an American. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Yeah. Pretty simple. Every court in the land, every person knows this. And on that night, I got kind of a smug non-response to it that, oh, Tim, we're thinking about the future or something like that. 
Well, yesterday they just start saying the, the quiet stuff outside. He got asked about it yesterday and he said, no, Donald Trump did not lose the 2020 election. Now, the job that we're asking for to serve the American public, we don't serve an individual. We serve the Constitution and the people of the United States. That's who we serve. J J.D. Vance, J.D. Vance made it clear his fealty is to Donald Trump, not the people of this community or any community across the country. But look, <laughs> here's the good news. He is never going to be vice president, and Donald Trump is never going to be president. You can say no to them and yes to Kamala Harris in a unified country. A new way forward. I love it when Kamala Harris talks about this. A kid who grew up in Oakland, a single mom, and a kid who grew up in rural Nebraska, middle class folks. The one thing we understand about this is the economy works best when it's fair and it's focused on the middle class. Now, that seems pretty simple to most of us, but not to these guys. So she's got a plan that we're laying out and we're talking about it very clearly. So I've been talking to the media, she's been talking to everyone. We're going to rural Pennsylvania and laying out a plan for rural America and we're being clear about this. Let's talk about some of the things that are in there. A hundred million Americans under Kamala Harris as president will see a tax cut focused at them. You, you heard Devin say that I passed the largest tax cut in Minnesota history. Not for the rich, but for the middle class. They didn't get a tax cut at the top. They're doing just fine. Look, and this idea of price gouging and cost of pharmaceuticals. I, I hope this is sinking into people. You saw it down here and we saw it in Florida. A hurricane's coming and all of a sudden airline prices went way up. That's not capitalism, that's price gouging. That's unfair, that's not right. And for insulin, capping it at 35, that's life and death. There's a young man in Minnesota named Alex Smith. Alex Smith aged out of his parents' insurance at 26, which we need to keep the ACA so you can stay on it to that. But Alex, Alex started rationing his insulin, and he ended up dying from it. And his mom had to come to the state capitol and say, I will not leave here until we fix this so nobody else loses their son for a $35 of medicine that costs $5 to manufacture. Five bucks. Five bucks. Now, I'm very excited. We got a pretty young crowd here, and that's good. So, uh, now, those of you that look like me, a little less hair, a little gray, I will tell all of you, though, you don't start really thinking about Medicare or Social Security until you see what it does. The greatest anti-poverty programs this country's ever seen. And Kamala Harris put forward a proposal here a week ago that is transformational. Medicare, when you get to be 60, you start paying attention to Medicare. Trust me on this. <laughs> because health care costs can bankrupt you. But Kamala Harris put out a plan that says, you know what, especially for rural communities across this country, Medicare will start paying for home health care so our seniors can stay in their homes. Good be. And whether it's, whether it's affordability on college or whether it's young folks and the rest of us trying to buy a home, building three million more affordable homes and down payment assistance to let people get in those homes. The down payment is what keeps us out of the homes. By doing the tax credit and allowing it to go forward, more people can buy homes across this country. <laughs> and those of you who want to be your own boss, $50,000 tax credit to start your own businesses and we'll get it back. President Clinton probably remembers this. We had a, uh, an incredible senator from Minnesota who we lost in a plane accident, Ray Too Young, named Paul Wellstone. And Paul Wellstone taught us, Paul Wellstone taught us a lot of things, but Paul Wellstone simplified the economy and made things so clear to this with a saying he had. He said, it's just simple, folks. We all do better when we all do better. That's what we're talking about. 
We know folks have, some folks have a tough go at it. Things get difficult for some folks. That's why earlier this week, Vice President put out and released agenda, an opportunity for black men. Look, there's no denying in this country that there are historical and systemic barriers that put, put up that stop people. There is no reason that home ownership rates for black families and white families should be so different because that's generational wealth that cheats the next generation. We know that. So when we talk about these proposals, we need to make sure, certainly the housing and all that, but specifically targeting access to capital for black entrepreneurs to start their own business is an absolute key. Absolute key. Making sure we're targeting job training and apprenticeship programs to communities so that folks can get the skills they need, the capital they need to be their own bosses or to work in the industries that make you in the middle class. So that's an agenda that's out there. And look, our laws have taken a disproportionate impact on certain communities, and certainly the black community. Laws around cannabis have disproportionately impacted and set back folks in those communities. So when we in Minnesota talk about this and Kamala talks about the country legalizing recreational cannabis, but make sure that the community that was most negatively impacted gets the first shot to make money in those industries. Those are ones that make a difference. And let's us start saying the quiet part out loud about Donald Trump of where he's been. J.D. Vance said it. J.D. Vance is the one who said this. He said, well, the voters don't really like the racist part of Trump. I didn't say it. He said it. He knows him best. But look, when Donald Trump is talking about bringing back stop and frisk policies and things like that, those are harassment that went on to the black community, specifically black males, and put a disproportionate number of them into incarceration and sent back an entire generation. We are not going back to those policies. We are not going back. You you know they want to make false choices. Let's be very clear here. Public safety and civil rights can go hand in hand. You don't have to choose one over the other. But I want to be fair. Not everybody thinks the same way do you do, and Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have a little bit different ideas. And I'll tell you what, they know exactly they know exactly what they're doing with Project 2025. I was telling President Clinton, Donald Trump today is coming out. He's pretty worried about this. He said, no one associated with Project 2025 will be in my administration. Every damn one of them were in his administration. <laughs> Every one of them. J.D. Vance says, I don't even know what that is. He wrote the foreword to the architect's book who wrote it. I've never written the foreword to somebody's book, but if I did, I'd sure the hell remember who they were. And they wrote that thing. I guarantee you that. So look, here's what's in that thing. Here's what's in it. Take away the Affordable Care Act. And look, this is the time now to talk to your neighbors, talk, hell, talk to your relatives who are voting the other way, or your brother, whoever it might be. We all got them, but they will tell you, well, I just don't like Donald Trump's character or some of the things he says, I like his policies. This is where you jump in and say, which policies? Taking away your health care? He, he said he had a concept of a plan after nine years. Then Vance tried to explain it. I told J.D., you should go back to the concept because your explanation is terrible about what it's going to do. Because the ACA was transformational because it protects us with pre-existing conditions. Because it, you don't have to be a business genius to understand. Insurance companies want to charge you premiums, and then what they'd really like to do is not have to pay out from that. One way to do that is, only insure healthy people and let the sick people, as Donald Trump would say, just get along however you can. That doesn't work. You create the pools together where all of us have an opportunity to get basic human rights of health care to be able to stay healthy. So, look, Donald Trump called Social Security a Ponzi scheme. J.D. Vance said it was the impediment or the roadblock to fiscal sanity. Social Security doesn't add to our national debt, and we damn sure pay into it. So when my dad dies and I'm a teenager, I got a little brother in elementary school, a stay-at-home mom. It was Social Security survivor benefits that kept our family alive, kept us going on it. That's smart. So, so look, 
we hear this, and I'm, this is a tough state. We, we know how to do this stuff. So when they tell you, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, damn happy to do it. We just didn't have any boots. So Social Security is the boots. I guarantee you, if I would have had $400 million, I would be in better shape than he is and wouldn't be bankrupt. So let's, let's today, I listened to two business interviews with this guy. I, I have met no one in my life that has less business acumen than Donald Trump. So put, a miss, put an end to that myth. Because this guy, this guy is trying to convince the entire world, because nobody, he and JD, believe it, his tariffs are a sales tax on everything we buy that will cost your family $4,000. Don't let him skate by and say, oh, China will pay for it. Yeah, just like Mexico will pay for the wall. We'll see how that, <laughs> not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So be very clear. He doesn't know business and he damn sure doesn't know the middle class. So look. And for all of you, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be generous. We are all products of our past. When you grow up a middle-class kid in Oakland or in Butte, Nebraska, you care about Social Security, you care about these things. When you're sitting down in Mar-a-Lago and you tell your rich friends, you're rich as hell, I'm gonna give you a tax cut, it doesn't matter to them. And you know what? When my mom looks for that Social Security deposit to be made in her bank account, that's how she's gonna feed herself. That's how she's gonna get things done. He doesn't give a damn if his Social Security check comes or not. So let's be very clear. If any of our relatives or anyone gives us this, if they tell us, well, Donald Trump's understand us, that's bullshit. He does not understand you. He does not understand you. Look, you know it. I'm, all right, for the little ones here, I'm a teacher. I'm sorry about that. I had to get carried away, so. Look, you know what we've got here. This issue, you've got it up on here. It's about freedom. It's about freedom, and I'll leave you with this, the freedom for women to make their own health care decisions. The freedom to drink clean water and breathe clean air. Those are the things. And I say this as a teacher and as a parent, the freedom to send your little ones to school in their best clothes so that they can go learn and be kids and not be shot dead in their classroom. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking nothing on this. I'm a veteran, I'm a hunter, I went pheasant hunting last weekend, I own firearms. Kamala Harris owns firearms. This might be the, I don't know President Clinton, this might be the first, this might be the first time that both Democrats on the ticket are gun owners right now. And it might also be the first time that the guy on the other side can't pass a background check because he has felonies. Look, there's another reason stakes in this election are so high, and you know it. Some of you hear this from folks in your life. Um, we made it through the first term of Trump. We could probably make it through another. I, I am an eternal optimist. I survived over a decade supervising the high school lunchroom. I'm an optimist. I am an optimist. But I genuinely worry for the democracy of this country. There is one political party now that is pro-democracy, and that's us right now. That's the truth. So all things aside, this is, this is truly serious. And I say this because someone I deeply respect, General Mark Milley, he was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the top military official under Donald Trump. And Mark Milley does not, he doesn't have time to mince words. This is a hero who's been out there and wore the uniform for over 30 years. He told us on the record that he believes Donald Trump is fascist to the core. <laughs> Trump's plan to seize unprecedented power for himself isn't hypothetical. It's written down in Project 2025. And the rest is coming right from his mouth. Last week, one of Trump's closest buddies, who he pardoned, Mike Flynn, Trump, Trump's former national security advisor, and he's a contender to be that job again in the White House. He was asked, he would ask point blank, if he would lead military tribunals to carry out executions if Trump wins again. Mike Flynn answered, we have to win first. 
he followed up that to make sure that we understood just how batshit crazy he was. He said, the gates of hell, the gates of hell, the gates of hell, Mike Flynn saying this, my hell will be unleashed. This is the guy that Donald Trump wants to hand the keys to the federal government over to on security. So, so look, if there's anybody in your life who really meant when, they, when Donald Trump said he called for a bloodbath after this election, if they think he's just talking, I have to tell you this. You remember 2016. You remember the way he talked. This is not that Trump even. This is something much more deranged, something much more desperate, maybe to stay out of prison. And with J.D. Vance there, there are no guardrails around him. You know how he will vote. So look. Lord knows Republicans in Congress won't have the courage to stand up to him. So there's one way to stop it. We need to go vote and win the election and make sure none of this ever happens. All right? Look, hundreds, hundreds of Republicans out with Kamala campaigning. Who would have ever thought we would see Bernie Sanders, Dick Cheney, and Taylor Swift on the same ticket. Oh, there you go. There you go. So look, we got to do what Americans do on this. That rhetoric has no place. That is, the, that is the language of dictators. That is the language of totalitarianism. We need to go to the polls, clean his clock, and win this thing. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to finish because you're here for the main event. But you're here for the main event. But I want to leave enough time that if you don't have one of those stickers on, go vote and get one today. Today. If you're not registered, you can register today and vote today. That's what you can do. And if you're going to vote by mail, do that today too and get it in. So look, follow the instructions carefully because these guys want to do whatever they can to throw out ballots. If you, if you need to, you know what you need to do. Iwillvote.com slash NC will tell you exactly where to go, how to do it, how to fill out your ballot, and how to get it done. Go knock doors. Go knock doors. Go make phone calls. Talk to your brother. Tell him to quit voting the other way. If you want to, KamalaHarris.com. Give a buck or two, knowing that in these battleground states, it lets us build out and get things like this going. So here's the thing. I'm going to turn it over to somebody whose accent might be closer to yours, a son of the South, speaking like a Midwesterner, a son of the South, a governor, a governor who went, someone who understood small town. And I will say this, as someone who named his daughter Hope, the man from Hope who brought us that all the changes that make a difference. Please join me in welcoming our 42nd president, Bill Clinton.